Greetings of the day. In this video, we shall discuss about selection of patients for extubation in the emergency department and resuscitatory unit. Patient selection for the ED extubation is highly dependent on the original indication for intubation and should be more stringent than in the ICU. For patients intubated in the ED, a prolonged ventilatory course and ICU admission are necessary, right? So a subset may require may require only transient and invasive mechanical ventilation. So the indication of uh, the uh, invasive mechanical ventilation must be resolved for ideal ED extubation candidate and selected should meet all the criteria following criteria which will which we will discuss in the later part of the video. So the suggested clinical presentations or consideration or avoidance for the ED extubation are as follows. So ED extubation can be safely attempted in a patient like intoxicated or drug overdose with the clinical sobriety airway protection per procedural sedation like there is endoscopy, head trauma with improved mental status and negative neuroimaging, palliative or terminal extubation. Palliative or terminal extubation in this setting should be performed without any meeting criteria too. Okay. And uh, uh, in case of uh, normal patients in all the other patients can be extubated if all extubation criteria are met. Then the extubation, ED extubation should be considered with caution in the following patients such as should be with the, considered with caution. That is anaphylaxis or laryngeal edema with improved symptoms and resolution of airway edema. So airway edema and anaphylaxis may have a biphasic uh, distribution. So initial improvement, uh, a secondary uh, phase may occur up to 24 hours after primary uh, presentation. So we must be careful for these patients. Um, and also in case of severe asthma or COPD with significant improvement and uh, undifferentiated altered mental status. Altered mental status and is a clinical challenge uh, as prediction of clinical results is very difficult in these patients. So we must be considerate in these patients. And cardiogenic pulmonary with significant improvement and uh, resolved hypoxia or hypercarbia after aggressive management that is diaphoresis or afterload and also reduction. ED extubation should not be considered in the setting of any patients with hemodynamically unstable need for high ventilatory support and expected prolonged uh, clinical course such as drowning, pneumonia, etc. And expected need for repeated invasive um, procedures or transfer or surgery. Expected need for repeated invasive surgeries, procedures. Okay repeated invasive surgeries so in these patients it is not to be done and significant neuromuscular disease such as uh, myasthenia gravis my multiple sclerosis etc and trauma to cervical spine or oropharyngeal and also laryngeal or lung injuries and cerebrovascular accidents pons brain stem can affect the airway maintenance right so the anatomical the neurological the muscular then the need for procedures or and also expected prolonged case and prolonged clinical course in the clinical pathology the need for high ventilatory support and hemodynamical instability so the cvs the cerebrovascular then anatomy the physiology that is neuromuscular then the clinical course or pathology then these are the conditions you should not do the uh, extubation at all and the uh, the resolution so the ventilator liberation, so the meeting criteria, we shall inclusion criteria for the emergency uh, department extubation are resolution of the initial indication for intubation, able to oxygenate and ventilate on minimal ventilator setting, and awake and able to uh, follow commands, hemodynamically stable, then uncomplicated initial intubation, expected to maintain airway patency post extubation, and anticipated hospital course does not require. Um, mechanical ventilation. So the resolution of initial indication for intubation, ventilated liberation would rely on the resolution of the condition that led to necess necessitation of the invasive mechanical ventilation. So this should be the first consideration of the ED extubation. The clinician should have a definitive understanding of the initial indication and this will indicate the likelihood of the extubation failure. And for example, intoxicated patient with a no assessment, no significant trauma that is now exhibiting clinical sobriety is an ideal extubation candidate. A drowning may worsen in the next 24 hours and would not be a good candidate.
So later on we will discuss about the various aspects of the extubation as well. Thank you very much.